Well, you're most welcome to today's talk, Friday, the 3rd of February. Now, a couple of days ago, probably about three days ago now, we looked at the Pfizer press release that was released at 8 p.m. on Friday evening. And of course, everyone knows, I think, now that the press release was suggested by this uh, Veritas organisation that parked its van outside of the Pfizer headquarters in uh, Manhattan and uh, the story is well known quite what we're allowed to report on that I'm not quite sure that's why I'm only going to leave it there but as a response to that Pfizer release this uh, th- this press release here and the first part we know about but then it goes on to tell us a lot of other things that were kind of tucked under the way. So I guess a lot of people that went to this website will go to that first bit and didn't sort of delve deeper into it. And we're going to do that now because Pfizer talk about some quite concerning adverse reactions to their uh, products. So this was this site here. Um, as we say, 8 p.m. on a Friday evening. Uh, they're talking about allegations of a gain of function uh, and uh, directed evolution research which we looked at a few days ago needless to say Pfizer denies because they wanted to set the record straight Uh, transparency is good Uh, now coincidentally I actually did this uh, poster a bit back Um, I think when I'm allowed so I think therefore I am sort of thing so um, just to clarify the situation we don't want anyone thinking unless someone much richer or much more important than you gives you permission to think we don't want independent thinking. I think that's what that post is uh, about. So think what you're supposed to think, not what the evidence suggests. Anyway, getting back to the topic. Um, now, this is directly from the Pfizer site, and this is just cut and paste from there. Seek medical attention right away if you have any of the following symptoms. After vaccination, difficulty breathing, uh, swelling of the face and throat, so difficulty breathing could be bronchospasm or it could be swelling of the upper airways. It could be either. Um, a fast heartbeat, um, a bad rash all over the body, dizziness and weakness. Now, clearly, um, this is talking about uh, the side effect of uh, anaphylaxis, severe allergic reaction. What happens is there's actually mass release of histamine from mast cells. And histamine will constrict the bronchial passages, making it difficult to breathe. And histamine will also dilate the peripheral vasculature, the the peripheral arterioles, sending lots of blood to the surface of the body, therefore lowering the blood pressure, prompting the uh, the compensatory tachycardia. So they're warning about this, and it's good that they warn about this. um, But there again, we've looked at the evidence for this from the yellow card scheme, for example, in the UK, or ages ago, weeks ago. So um, Pfizer is here talking about what is basically now in the public domain. Um, So that's one risk there that they are uh, actually spelling out. And and, and to give Pfizer uh, fair fair credit on this, it's good that they are spelling this out because they are the symptoms of anaphylaxis. Normally, we would need to treat it with intramuscular injections of adrenaline or epinephrine if you're in the States. Adrenaline and epinephrine are exactly the same molecule. Um, They also say, uh, seek medical attention right away if you have uh, myocarditis, so inflammation of the heart muscle, the beating contractile myocardium. So again, they're clearly acknowledging this as an adverse reaction now. Um, Pericarditis, inflammation of the outside of the heart. So again, they're talking about those and they're quite front. This is having occurred after some people have had the Pfizer uh, vaccines and of course the Moderna the other mRNA vaccines are also associated with this risk now in this press release and we are again remember we're reading directly from their site here albeit buried under the slightly uh, uh, more headline grabbing bit about gain of function and uh, directed evolution Um, the observed risk they say is higher amongst adolescent males and adult males under 40 years of age compared to females and older males. Now, I've certainly come across females who've had cardiac complications, so it's it's by no means saying they can't get it. 
but they are saying it's more common in younger men. Risk is highest in ma- uh, males uh, 12 through to 17. Uh, adolescent uh, males are at greatest risk. Now, in most people, they say symptoms begin within a few days following receipt of the second dose of the vaccine. So I think it's important to note those anaphylaxis symptoms we looked at would occur from a minute or two after the vaccine up to or normally within a few minutes, but, but it could be delayed up to an hour potentially. Um, whereas these are uh, these side effects are coming on more slowly, according to Pfizer. Symptoms began within a few days of receipt of the second dose of the vaccine. Not exclusively, though, we have seen others after the first or the third dose, just most common after the second dose. Uh, But Pfizer don't uh, specify the magnitude of the risk. So quite how many people uh, have suffered from these side effects isn't specified. So uh, we like to be helpful on this channel, so we'll give some information. Uh, We did look recently at this paper from Vaccine. The journal Vaccine, published by the Japanese Society of Vaccinology from memory. Pfizer mRNA COVID-19 vaccine, associated with an excess risk of serious adverse events of special interest, 10.1 per thousand uh, vaccinated. So that's roughly one in a thousand, isn't it? Uh, Per thousand people vaccinated. Uh, Moderna... um, COVID-19 vaccine associated with an excess risk of serious adverse events, a special interest of uh, 15, uh, so that I, I haven't got the exact figure, but that's around about 1 in 650. And combined, that's 1 in 800. So about 1 in 800 people who get the mRNA vaccines. Um, according to the original reanalysis of the original clinical trial data, the phase 3 clinical trial data from Pfizer and Moderna, published in Moderna, uh, can have a uh, associated with an excess risk of a serious advert event, ad, adverse event of special interest. So maybe that puts some sort of magnitude uh, just to help Pfizer um, with their explanation because they didn't seem to put that on. Now let's just leave that there, that risk there, one in a thousand, one in six fifty, one in eight hundred uh, per. Uh, of course, this doesn't tell us about the age. This is part of the problem here. We don't have the. Uh, the differentiated data from these original trials. These are overall figures, so we can assume that the risk is higher in in young men, for example. But if we compare this with the latest figures from the UK Health Security Agency and the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation in the UK, again, the links are here or here. Check out the links. This is not made up. Table three, number needed to vaccinate. So how many people you'd need to vaccinate for prevention of hospitalisations, a fear hospitalisation in different age groups. So looking at the autumn booster, for example, um, we would need to vaccinate 73,500 16 to 19 year olds to prevent one uh, one hospitalisation. 73,500 to prevent one serious hospitalisation, 185,000. So we can see that this is 73 times uh, less likely than one adverse event from the uh, vaccine. So you can take your choice for Pfizer vaccine, for example, one in a thousand chance of a serious uh, adverse event of special interest based on Pfizer's original own data, or um, we'd need to vaccinate 73,500 to prevent one hospitalization, 185,000, 100, prevent one serious hospitalization. Um, And one serious hospitalisation could simply mean someone needs oxygen therapy, according to this, uh, these criteria from the uh, UK Health Security Agency. 20 to 29. uh, Now, this wasn't differentiated according to high and low risk. So this is overall for all. We have to assume this is for overall for all 16 to 19 year olds. Um, The 20 to 29 year olds for the autumn booster, again, it is differentiated. Uh, people with no risk, you'd have to vaccinate 169,200 to prevent one hospitalisation, or you'd have to vaccinate 706,500 to prevent one serious hospitalisation. In a risk group, that goes down to 7,500 vaccines necessary, or uh, 59,500 vaccines necessary to prevent one serious hospitalisation. And again, just compare even these figures to... uh, the Pfizer risk of one in a thousand of um, 
severe hospitalization. So the risk-benefit analysis has greatly changed. Greatly, greatly changed. I mean, it's just complete. I think you've understood that bit. Now, um, back to the Pfizer report. Side effects that have been reported with these vaccines include, and again, this is direct from Pfizer. So I suppose this is so public domain now, they have to uh, acknowledge this. Severe allergic reactions, uh, non-severe allergic reactions, such as rash, itching, hives, swelling of the face. Myocarditis, pericarditis, pretty serious. Injection site pain, less concerning. But more systemic, tiredness, headache, muscle pain, uh, chills, joint pain, fever. All of those things concern me more because they're like systemic in nature. Uh, they're affecting all systems of the body. As indeed a heart inflammation is systemic because the cardiovascular system, of course, is a body system. Injection site swelling, again, less concerning, as indeed is the injection site redness, usually less, uh, would be less concerning for me. Nausea, feeling unwell, swollen lymph nodes, lymphadenopathy, uh, decreased appetite, diarrhea, with the American spelling, of course, <laughs> vomiting, um, arm pain, arm pain, infers it's going to other parts of the arm which again is more concerning i'd like a breakdown on that but that's what we know fainting associated with injection of vaccine uh, unusually persistent uh, irritability unusual and persistent poor feeding sort of anorexia type things unusual and persistent lack of energy again these things are more concerning again because these are uh, systemic uh, reactions indicating effects on other parts of the body other than just the injection site of course uh, but the Pfizer go on <laughs> and again the, these are uh, things admitted by Pfizer unusually and persistent cool pale skin don't like the sound of that that's not right at all well I, I agree with what they say but um, uh, persistent cool skin is is like um it would mean you've got peripheral shutdown, really, which is not a good thing. A dizziness. Uh, they, they're main, th these may not be all of the possible side effects of these vaccines, so they admit there's possibly other side effects. Again, numbers would be good here, uh, but Pfizer don't give us uh, numbers. Um, they just list these things. Call the vaccination provider or healthcare provider about bothersome side effects that may that that do not go away so are they admitting here the side effects that do not go away kind of looks like it um don't quite like the way the book is simply passed on to the healthcare providers um individuals should always ask their healthcare provider for medical advice about adverse events so um well again a bit of a universal cop out there now, this is encouraging. I'm pleased to see this. Reported vaccine side effects using... So they're advising you report vaccine side effects via the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System. This is in the United States. In the UK, of course, it would be the yellow card system. But that's where I reported my uh, uh, suspected uh, adverse reaction to the mRNA vaccines using the yellow card scheme. But not many people do, Um only about 10%, according to the Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Authority, report serious side effects, and only about 2 to 4% report less serious side effects. So we really do need to encourage UK nurses and doctors to report many, many more adverse reactions, and individuals to report many more adverse reactions. In the UK, it was easy to do. Um, filing my yellow card report was not at all difficult. How difficult it is to use the, the VAERS system in the States, I've never used it, so I don't know. Do let me know um, but they are advising that and they're also saying you can report these adverse reactions directly to Pfizer um, that's what they're saying I'm not quite sure um, are Pfizer collecting interesting does this mean that Pfizer are collecting their own data sets on, on, on adverse reactions as well it looks like it doesn't it as well as the official uh, vaccine adverse events reporting system in the States 
Um, tell your vaccinator about all your medical conditions, including if you have allergies, have had myocarditis or pericarditis, have a fever. Again, this, this will be true for all vaccines. I don't put any great emphasis on that. Have a bleeding disorder on a blood thinner, on immunocompromised or on a medicine that affects the immune system. I do hope the uh, the person that's uh, doing the vaccine is a, is a medical expert um, to understand all this. Are pregnant or... What are they saying here? I don't know. Are, are pregnant? I mean, in the UK, we're vaccinating people that are pregnant. Why? Um, I'm not quite sure why Pfizer are saying that. Um, do they know something we don't? Well, obviously, I don't know. That's what Donald Rumsfeld will call an unknown unknown. Um, have received another COVID vaccine, have either fainted and associated with a, an injection. The vaccine may... Oh, here, here, this is interesting. Here, Pfizer is saying the vaccine may not protect everyone. So interesting, interesting here. Pfizer on this press release are saying the vaccine may not protect everyone. And do, do check these out. They're all, they're all here. It's not. This is not me making things up. All these are here in the Pfizer press release, albeit buried before below the slightly more scintillating uh, information. Um, I've ever fainted. Yeah, yeah uh, the vaccine may not protect everyone. Right. So the vaccine may not protect everyone. Simple statement of fact there from Pfizer themselves. Fact-based information rooted in sound science is vitally important to overcoming the COVID-19 pandemic. We agree. And Pfizer remains committed to transparency and helping alleviate the devastating burdens of this disease. Some people might think they're slightly more transparent with the help of alcohol and the potential of sexual opportunity, but that's not for me to say. So there we go. Uh, make sure you don't think for yourself. You can download these posters, of course, they're freely available. Simon's made them all freely available to download. Um, it'd be good if they're all around the world. Why, why, why not? Why not? They're good, they're good photos. This one, by the way, is Hadrian's Wall near where I live. And this one is the Ring of Brogda in the, uh, the Neolithic site in the Orkneys. Good. So I think that's us for today. Um, interesting that this all comes directly from Pfizer itself. Um, quite... Why are they listing so many of their side effects there? I'm not entirely sure. I guess it's because they're in the public domain and I don't entirely know. But they are there and uh, we are allowed to report these uh, side effects because they are officially now recognised. We'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.